It is the Monday edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Mike Joyce back at it Hello. after his trip to the plains last week. Mike, yes. <laughs> uh, follow Mike on on Twitter or on Facebook. Uh, you know he was out in the plains doing some storm chasing with a group last week, both from Ohio State and Ohio University. Right, right. right. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, in case you haven't checked out some of his pictures, and some of them are really interesting, be sure and check them out if you haven't yet. Mike, just real quick, what did you see and what didn't you see last week in your travels? Well, we really had one solid day, and that's one thing about storm chasing is there's a lot of sitting around. Mm -hmm. You you spend a lot of time doing forecasting, which in itself is kind of fun, you know, seeing what, you, what you're going to get right, what you're going to get wrong, and where you're going to go. But really, we had one good day. We were out there Monday through Friday, and Wednesday was our day. We saw, ended up seeing uh, tennis ball size hail, which I've never Ooh, witnessed wow. in my life. Imagine the noise that must make. It's just amazing. It's deathly terrifying. Mm -hmm. Like, you hear that and you dash for the car. It's it's almost scarier than seeing a tornado. Because yeah. when you see a tornado, I mean, you know, oftentimes you can position yourself. So you're not in danger. Right. right. Yeah. But with the hail, it's like you're there. Oh, well, you can't really escape. You just have to yeah. get in your car and hope it doesn't shatter anything, mm -hmm. which it didn't. But yeah, Wednesday was a good day. We saw one brief tornado touchdown, no damage, no, uh, it was in a field, so that was nice. That's a good thing. We saw a lot of chasers. We saw Reed Timmer and his Dominator tank thing that he has. And uh, But Thursday was kind of dull. Saw a few, saw a really good storm on Thursday, just like photogenic-wise, mm -hmm. it wasn't severe. And then Friday we came home. Excellent. That's the one thing about thunderstorms in the plain states, everything's so flat out there. And just the way some of these things work, that they tend to be more photogenic storms oh, out there. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and so that you can get some really great pictures. Well, we're glad you're back safe. Yes. Glad you, you had a good time and, and, and learned some things. And yeah, storm chasing is not like the movie Twister. No. Uh, there's not, not tornado after tornado after tornado, and there's no time to rest. Uh, uh, even though they, there is a scene in Twister where they go have lunch with uh, the crazy older lady. Oh, uh, yeah. Helen Hunt's. Ant or something. And Meg, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wakita. We In almost Wakita. went to Wakita, but we we really wanted to go there, but we missed it by uh, a little bit. Oh, well. So, oh, well. So we're back at it today, and severe weather is not much of a concern here, but uh, as we record this at 2.25 p.m., here's a look at Storm Tracker 21 radar. And, yeah, we've got some thunder and lightning with some of these cells out to our west. So it looks like the kind of the beefiest-looking action here is along 62 from Alliance down to uh, Louisville, close to Canton, and then down towards Minerva. I'll put this in motion. This will load up, and you know you can kind of see the general trend uh, or the the general motion of this is east. So we're talking about Columbiana County, the western part of Columbiana County here, uh, late in the two o'clock hour into the three o'clock hour. Probably going to hear some thunder and lightning. Parts of uh, western Mahoning County as well. Probably getting in on this action as we head into the three o'clock hour. Up into Trumbull County, we do have a couple of cells up here along Route 11, Cortland up to Mecca around Mosquito Lake. There's not much thunder and lightning back here in Portage County and up into Geauga County, but there is some back here closer to I-77 uh, from Richfield to, uh, through Hudson, Twinsburg, up to Cleveland. So bottom line, Mike, for the rest of the day, uh, probably going to be in and out of some raindrops. Right. And you're probably going to hear some thunder. And uh, so if, if you are watching this shortly after we record it, uh, if you want to get some yard work done, uh, now's the time, particularly if you live in Mercer County, down into Lawrence County, you still got a decent amount of time, but your time is, is running out in uh, the rest of the viewing area as the raindrops push in. We'll take a broader look at things, and there's a pretty big temperature spread across the state today. Uh, upper 70s here around the valley, but well into the 80s down in Cincy, uh, 81, 82 in Columbus, but 84, 85, 86 down towards Cincinnati. Take off the satellite picture here, and uh, there's severe thunderstorm watch, Milwaukee, Chicago, back to Des Moines and Davenport, Quincy. Uh, and that's where the threat for severe weather really is this afternoon. Here's the uh, SPC outlook. I'm going to take off the temperatures. Uh, slight risk in the yellow. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the, the word slight, but the enhanced risk, anyway, uh, is definitely out here. And then that enhanced risk does get into parts of Ohio, although I think our, you know, our risk here isn't quite as high as, as it is out in, in Chicago, places like that. Uh, just a real quick look at the uh, the uh, CAPE values. Uh, if you're a regular viewer of these videos or Facebook posts, things like that, CAPE is convective available potential energy, a kind of a fancy meteorological term to describe the instability in the atmosphere. And you can see it's quite a bit higher Western Ohio this afternoon. Now, some of these values out here, Mike, along I-75, let's see, we get into the purples, and that's getting up to almost 4,000 joules of CAPE. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot of CAPE. Now, when you have high CAPE values, that doesn't guarantee you're going to see storms, but it, it shows you that the fuel is there. One of the ingredients is there 
for there to be some storms, you might need a trigger to get the air to start rising, but once the air starts rising, it has no problem continuing to rise when you have these sorts of values. Up here, we're more in the, it looks like, 1,000 to 1,500 range, certainly high enough to get some thunder and lightning, right. um, but uh, severe weather, yeah, not, not real likely. There are other things we look at, but uh, CAPE is one of the more important uh, meteorological variables that we take a look at. All right, so let's talk about the future then here. Uh, bring up the latest HER model, HRRR, Rapid Refresh Model uh, Simulated Radar Product here. We'll start this at 4 o'clock this afternoon. And what we have going on here is our showers and thunderstorms by 4 o'clock are probably now edging over towards I-79. So again, Mercer County, Lawrence County, get your yard work done before 4 o'clock probably or even 3.30. Uh, as we then roll on through the rest of the evening, I don't think much is going to happen. Uh, the atmosphere is going to kind of get stable enough because of this rain that here's 8 o'clock this evening. Maybe there's a lonely cell or two back here. But the bottom line is the wettest part of the day in most of the WFMJ viewing area is going to be between 2.30 and probably 4, 4.30. That sounds right. right yeah. So kind of mid-afternoon. And then this evening, if you've got softball or tonight's your golf league, I think you'll be all right. Things are still going to be damp from the mid-afternoon rain, but it's probably not going to be raining in most spots by 5, 6, 7 o'clock. So the day is going to end on a decent note. Let's talk about tomorrow then. Here's uh, here's Tuesday. Now, I think uh, tomorrow is probably the warmest day of the week, wouldn't you say? Probably, yeah. yeah. Temperatures are struggling a little bit today. It's warm. It's humid, but we're probably not going to see 84, 85 this afternoon because of the threat for some rain here during the warmest part of the day. But tomorrow... I don't think it's real likely that we see much convection or thunderstorm activity in the middle of the afternoon. So temperatures probably have no trouble getting well in the 80s tomorrow, uh, mm -hmm. I would think. Uh, probably our warmest day of the year, even. And when you factor in a fair amount of humidity, it's probably going to be the most summer-like feeling day of the year tomorrow. <laughs> or yeah, 85 degrees and dew points probably in the mid-60s, something like that, or even lower 60s. Uh, that, uh, that means it's probably going to feel pretty muggy out there. So Wednesday, we've been advertising Wednesday as the wettest day of the week, and I think the end of the day is still looking that way. But, uh, Mike, the, the latest model trends suggest that it's going to be one of those days where maybe not much happens in the morning. It's going to be right. more so uh, favored or, or weighted towards the end of the day Wednesday. Mm -hmm. This is our cold front, and this is a pretty strong front, but it's slowing down. Got a wave of low pressure along it here uh, uh, Thursday, uh, causing the front to slow down. And that means Thursday could be a pretty wet day as well, I think. Um, uh, so we could uh, have more bouts of rain, some lightning and thunder possibly. And uh, this is some cool air coming behind it. Uh, Friday, uh, we're just showing you the GFS here, but the Canadian and the European models have somewhat similar ideas. The overall idea here is that uh, the wettest part of the, the whole week, at this point I would say it's probably Wednesday night into Thursday. We'll see you know, a, a decrease in activity by Friday, but still probably not totally out of the woods. It's probably going to shower a couple of times mm -hmm. here on Friday. The, the, you know, the heaviest rain the, the, right along the front is more in Pennsylvania and New York on Friday. But here in Ohio and western Pennsylvania, it's probably a scattered showers kind of a day. And then the weekend's here, and this you know, kind of looks like a cool day coming up on, on Saturday. Maybe there's a stray shower, but uh, temperatures by the week, the end of the week, the weekend, below average, uh, probably no better than what, the lower 60s? Right, that's what I was looking at. I, I was I was thinking maybe upper 50s on Saturday. Yesterday, it seems like the trends bumped that up a couple degrees today, which is good. But, yeah, that's it's going to be, you know, average highs are in the upper 60s this time of year. Yeah, so. it's, it's, it's amazing how quickly things change. It wasn't right. that long ago <laughs> that 58 degrees sounded amazing. Right. Now 58 is like, ooh. Jacket weather. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be a cool start, a uh, cool end of the week, probably a cool start to the weekend. And then I think next week will trend warmer. Real quickly, uh, here's the day three SPC uh, severe weather outlook. This is a Wednesday into Wednesday night. Uh, so this is a, a period where we're going to have to keep an eye on things. Uh, uh, the question is how much sun do we get on Wednesday? I think if we don't get much, the atmosphere probably doesn't get too unstable. But before that, the bulk of the moisture heads our way. If we get some sun and the atmosphere heats up, yeah, there could be a couple of gusty storms around. The the enhanced risk or slight risk comes up to about I-70 right now on uh, Wednesday and Wednesday night. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on the storms for the rest of this afternoon. Follow both Mike and myself on Facebook and Twitter. Put meteorologists in front of our names. Uh, storm tracker accounts on Facebook and Twitter. We'll keep those updated with uh, the latest radars as well. So uh, you're always in touch with us here, and you can check out the interactive radar, wfmj.com slash weather, and be sure and get our app on uh, your phone or your tablet because we've got the radar on there as well. So uh, we're always keeping that updated as well.
There's no reason why you can't be updated with our latest forecast. Yeah, human, a human forecast is what you get on that. Exactly, nice. exactly. There's no automation on there. We're talking about forecasts that Mike or Jess or myself have inputted in there manually. Bad typing and all. <laughs> That's our forecast in there. It's not some computer-generated thing like you see on a lot of the apps. All right, have yourself a great Monday. We'll see you once again here tomorrow.